it. Okay. And I, I decided when I was just reviewing what I was going to say today that um, actually what I really want to say is why records management matters more than ever, particularly in relation to transparency and openness. Yeah. Um, and I was reflecting on um, looking at this from a business and management point of view. Um, and some of the things that you've already highlighted, obviously, um, are, are relevant in this. This is about keeping statutory records. Um, we very much as businesses focus on policy requirements, uh, performance and reporting, uh, which is, is critical in terms of how we uh, uh, interact with our stakeholders, because if we are not collecting meaningful performance and reporting data, we can't communicate effectively about it. And, and what that really started me thinking about was it's not just about process of, of, of sharing um, of sharing what we're doing performance wise. It's not just about telling people uh, the outcomes of what we're doing, but I think there is an increasing interest in how we actually go about doing our business processing. Um, and I can tell you from a, a public service complaints point of view, that it's very often how things are handled that becomes the focus of what people are dissatisfied with. And that, in turn, requires us to keep good records of how we do things, not just what we do. And of course, in, in business and management terms, um, we are reliant on, on good records for business planning, because it's not just about what we're doing now, it's about how we become transparent and engaged about what we do in the future. Now, it's, it's critical, obviously, that we have historic records, and there is a focus on that, because um, we need to be able to demonstrate what our corporate history and, importantly, development was. And that's not just in relation to our organisation, but it's also in terms of our contribution to how society develops, how um, norms develop and how data is relevant to those. Um, and this is particularly relevant, I think, in the public sector, which is held under a different sort of scrutiny than other areas. Um, and when you start trying to look at the mosaic of what we as a public sector hold between us, um, and colleagues in the Information Commissioner's Office will know this only too well. It's, it's the mosaic of how bits of information across the public sector fit together, not just what we as individual organisations do. So as records management managers, one of our challenges is actually about how we integrate with that wider environment. Um, now, I think where the accountability issue most comes in and the transparency issue most comes in is how we demonstrate our accountability. This, this is um, an area that is gaining traction. Um, we, we are accountable to citizens, but often there's a, a mismatch or a, a missing um, connection point between our direct accountability to citizens as a whole and our individual accountability for individual pieces of work that we process. So as a, as a complaints organisation, how are we accountable to the individual citizens that make complaints? But in the wider context, how do we use our data to make ourselves accountable to all citizens? Now, some of this is through parliament and government, and I think this is an interesting area for records managers in terms of actually exploring what it is Parliament and government think they need to know about what we as organisations are doing. Because I, I don't know about your experiences, particularly in the public sector, but very often what you're reporting and what you are collecting in terms of data uh, is is linked to what you think people want to hear about about what you are doing. Now we we all try doing um, regular feedback, getting customer feedback. We try learn from complaints. We do surveys. Um, but my experience recently is that there's there's less um, direct. 
feedback so much as we'll make a complaint about something. And, and I think the other um, area of accountability and, and engagement that is really critical uh, that often um, it, it's paid lip service and people are committed to it, but it's that accountability, engagement and transparency with employees. So how you make decisions, what decisions you make, even down to the uh, basic points about what is a management or a leadership team discussing? What are they talking about? Um, and what you find, I think, when you start trying to drill down into how you hold yourself accountable is the first port of call is often uh, a data analyst or a records manager, manager or um, somebody to say, can you tell me how many of these, how many of those, what time did it take? Um, and one of the challenges that um, our organisation, I think, in common with many other spaces is knowing what qualitative data to capture as you go along and how you catalogue it, store it, most importantly, how you do it in such a way that you can retrieve it and balance that with GDPR requirements. So I can give you feedback on, you know, on, on complaints about the NHS. We uphold about 43% of those that we investigate, but that's meaningless if we can't give you the context. And I think the context is the really, really challenging bit. Now, one of the things that I think that we need collectively to talk about more, but less in, in records keeping terms, is how we do more sharing of what we keep actively with stakeholders, as opposed to in response to stakeholder engagement or in response to stakeholder questions and this I, I apologize I make no apologies for the motherhood and apple pie now but the critical thing for me is how records are kept in the first place how they're structured retrievable secure verified you know we cannot ignore information governance in this um, but I think one of the things that I don't always see is how records managers themselves are seen as an essential internal stakeholder in business development, but equally how other um, stakeholders have to take their own responsibility for ensuring we have effective records manager, um, effective records in place. Because if we don't have the marriage of the two, what we tend to have is this records are over here, business is over there, which this brings me to the extra point I was going to make today. Uh, and this wasn't in my, my original um, uh, presentation. And, and that's, uh, I'm going to use the dreaded COVID word, but not because it's COVID, but because of what COVID has done in terms of impact. Um, we, I think, are seeing a fundamental game change and records through experience and I'm going to bear all and share this experience what it's highlighted for me is my organization were not completely kitted out to working at home and so like many we within the space of a, a week had to up sticks and start working from home and all the focus was on the technology has everybody got a laptop? Can everybody connect to case management systems? Uh, can you connect to our corporate management um, file management systems, which incidentally we chose to upgrade halfway through lockdown, which was an adventure, I think is the best way of putting it. But what it really, really highlighted, and I think highlighted for the, if you like, end users in the organization is, the importance of the real basics, file plans and naming conventions, because suddenly without being able to shout across the office or pick up the phone to somebody and say, oh, can you remember where we keep that document on so-and-so? Didn't you do something on, on that a little while ago? We actually now are understanding, I think, through experience, the real importance 
of the basic good practice of record keeping. And where that basic good practice has been illuminated and has come to its fore is because of needing to retrieve the information and retrieve the data. And with, with this, there are issues about control and audit and security and how you put in place risk-based approaches, knowing that people are working remotely, often at home, often with family around them. And the, the final thing I, I wanted to just add in relation to why I think the game has changed for records management and records keeping is this idea of business agility. We have had to work very quickly on making fundamental business changes in the way we deliver business. And what we have begun to recognize in a different way is that we've got to be just as agile in how we adapt the records we keep. So a good example is um, I spend as much time having to tell various different public uh, official organizations what I'm doing in relation to COVID as what we're actually doing. But what we found very quickly was we needed to have a way of making changes to what we captured so that we were capturing our experience and learning of the pandemic and of having to work remotely and of having to work in different ways. And, and this really brought home the need for a very, very quick change control uh, in terms of um, what we recorded on cases, uh, what we recorded about decisions we took. And it's led us to make some, some immediate changes, which post COVID, I want us to go back and reflect on. And I'm, I'd be really interested to hear from people about their experience there, because one of the difficulties in terms of transparency has been the internal transparency, has everybody got what they need? But it's also about the external stakeholder transparency, because what we no longer have at the moment, and I don't think we're ever likely to go back having in the same way, is the sitting in the room with everybody, um, the being able to share to wide audiences in a meeting environment or a workshop environment. Now, I accept fully you can do some of this on um, uh, platforms like Teams and WebEx, um, but it doesn't have quite the same feel to it. And I think in terms of agility for changing the way we record um, what we're doing. It also highlights this point that started right at the beginning of how do you know what to collect in order to be able to be accountable. And we, we I think in most organisations, probably angst about this. Do we need to record our outcomes of complaints in this way? Do we need to record things in this way? Um, and we try to either do a bells and whistles and then tie ourselves into an IT structure that is expensive to change. Um, and I think what we've learned is that in terms of business and record keeping for openness and accountability, we actually need to start approaching our, our IT systems in a different way so that we can make changes very quickly and be less um, tied down by thinking it's got to be the same this year as last year so that we can show the journey we've been on uh, or so that we can show how things have compared to last year because if nothing else my parting shot to you is um, there has been so much change that I'm not sure that any comparison to previous years is going to be meaningful so what can we tell people about now and in the future have we got the historic records to show how rapid this change was and how we reacted to it. And I'm still sincerely hoping you heard all of that um, because I still can't see anybody, but I think I can hear you, John, if you speak. So I'm, I'm very happy to take questions. Yeah, well, no, 
Yes, thank you very much, Rosemary. Yes, that all came through loud and clear and really interesting. Um, so um, we've got a, you know, an interesting uh, audience, um, a wide representation of, of the sector. I, I know we've got some people from outside of, of mm -hmm. Scotland as well. I, I wonder, um, do we have any questions from anyone on, on Rosemary's talk or even or general observations? Um, maybe I could kick off Rosemary while people are having to think about that. And, and, and as I say, if you want to ask a question, use the chat box or um, you know, raise your hand. Um, you mentioned one of the things you said, Rosemary, that, that struck with me is that you know, the situation that we're currently living under um, is a game changer. It's a game changer in so many different ways, but in terms of records management, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. And earlier in the year, you, you may be aware that the International Council on Archives, along with another a number of other international bodies, uh, um, put out a statement um, saying that the duty to document in time of crisis was more important than ever. And it seems that the, the, the role of the records manager are people who have a responsibility for records management within their organisations, as you say, is now more important than ever. And, and do you think that that will be understood you know, by people in authority? You know, every day the, the First Minister um, you know, gives a present, uh, gives and makes announcements and she's using information that's been collated and analysed by the National Records of Scotland. So it seems that records management is now very much at the um, and it, you know, it's, it's at the, the, the front of discussions and understanding what's happening just now in, in a way that perhaps it hasn't been for, for some time. Yeah, um, I, I don't think it's entirely understood. People react to the message. So the first minister's messages, as the example you gave, are the result of what has been drawn out of records. And I think the, the fundamental change has to come within the leadership of organisations because it's at the leadership and governance level where this link needs to be made between if we want to give the messages, we need the data and the information, but the data and the information is not just down to records managers, it's down to everybody who is responsible for producing it and saving it. But records managers need to be as important to creating that external message and the, um, the content for it as perhaps the communications uh, department or the press office. But I think it's highlighted the importance of records, perhaps in a more graphic way than constantly saying it's important. Um, because it's only when you're faced with, uh, as a, as a, a an organisation leader, I'm sorry you can't have that. We don't record it in that way. Well, why can't we record it in that way? The IT system is set up in such a way that we can't add to it unless we go and pay for some changes. Um, and that's X number of days development. And it, it, it always got bumped down the list, not because it wasn't recognised as important, but because it was not seen as a priority. And I think, if anything, the changes the priority hopefully is beginning to be understood differently by organisation leaders. Yeah, and so we've had a comment in from um, one of the, uh, the attendees. I think it's, it's Heather. I, um, I think that's Heather Jack, who's uh, a records manager and one of SCS trustees, um, where she talked about it's important to establish, you know, what, what to record, where, when and how, but also uh, by whom and, and widening the scope of who we consult with to identify uh, what needs to be recorded. And I think you, you'd made the point about uh, having a better understanding and improving how we share uh, information yeah. with stakeholders and rather than you being uh, proactive uh, in, rather than simply being responsive. Um, I, I, I completely agree with Heather and um, hello Heather. And um, I, I think it comes as a surprise to to you occasionally. I've, I've had a couple of these surprises where I've, I've been to um, Sort of public type meetings where uh, we've had complainers or ex-complainers saying what do you mean you don't record that i thought that was a really obvious thing that people would want to know and when they told us what it was we thought hmm, it was a really obvious thing but we've been thinking about it like complaint handlers rather than thinking about it as what does the wider audience need to know and it's this it's this match between what we think people need and asking them what they 
actually need. Although I will add a word of caution in there, is it, it's like doing any major consultation. Um, you'll come up with a list of things so long that you can't do everything, but from it, you, you can identify, I think, the more important things. But we've certainly changed, um, completely changed our some of the information on our website for complainers uh, because of the, the reactions of this is what I need to know. This is what I'm most interested in. Hello. Hi, Rosemary, are you there? I can still see Rosemary, but. Hi, Rosemary, you, you, you've drifted out. I think you're coming back. Are you still there? Hi, Rosemary, are you back with us? I, I am. I don't know at what point I drifted out then. It's OK. Um, I think well, I was just saying about who who is ultimate responsibility for authenticity within the record. Is it is record managers or is it the leaders of organisations? Um, that's a really good question. I, I think the records managers have a responsibility to put in place the systems that enable authentic records and I think they have a responsibility for quality assurance and providing assurance but ultimately I would say the authenticity lies with those who lead the organisation because the authenticity is more than just the record itself. Um, I also think it lies with the leaders of organisations because the records manager cannot possibly be involved in every piece, every record created, but individuals are responsible for the records created. And unless there is um, clear leadership that, that it is an expected thing that you do this according to our records management practices, um, you wouldn't hold the records manager responsible for people not doing it. You would hold the leaders and the line managers responsible for that. Yeah, and, and again, that, that comes down to a comment you made earlier about the importance of context. Um, I mean, is it something to consider that the authenticity, the trustworthiness of evidence is in danger when sources are, are, are taken out of their, their, their original context? Um, in, Yeah, I, I think the the context thing is really important because this is about how you deliver the message with the records, using the records you have. But the trust one, I think, is a really interesting relationship because the trust often comes in not what you say, but also how you say it and can you corroborate it? Uh, and I think a really good example of this is if you go onto somewhere like the BBC website and they have their fact checker and they will analyse, um, they've done it with first ministers, they've done it with um, 
the, the current American candidates uh, for, for the presidential election, they'll go in and they will challenge the actual data and information itself. So very often what you'll you'll find in those, because I, I, I'm always fascinated, I go and read them, it'll say, well, it's not untrue, but taken out of this context, it has a slightly different meaning. So yes, I think context is important, but I also think that we need to be mindful that as public bodies, particularly, everything we do is scrutinized. Um, everything we look at is questioned. And, and it's it's hard to take that in sometimes. I think if you're just sitting at, at your desk or your laptop or what have you doing your, your work, but I, I go to um, you know, things like giving evidence at parliamentary committees and some of the questions sort of take you sideways because you think, where on earth did they dig that up from? So yes, we have to ensure that they're kept well. Um, and I do think we have we can't ignore the link between trust and robustness of data, which makes it even more important for leaders of organisations to support their records managers. Well, thank you, Rosemary. Sorry, I, I may have um, dis disconnected for a minute there, but thank you for answering that. Um, just one other last question for me is, I mean, there, larger organisations, you know, particularly in the public sector, will have records managers or people with the responsibility for records management. But there are lots of small organisations, you know, there are very small organisations, particularly in the third sector, where the Scottish Council and Archives operates. Um, what can, can we do more to help those organisations who are the um, the owners and managers of lots of really important information data? How, how can we help them become um, more effective um, records keepers in, in a way that's going to benefit wider society? Oh, you don't make it easy for me today, do you? Um, I, I think practical advice and support, and it, it's perhaps looking at the importance of the combination of historic creation of historic records with retrieval of information that is currently needed. Um, one of the things that I think differentiates some of the very large organisations from the smaller ones is um, large organisations invest considerable money and time in things like ERDM systems. We ourselves have done it we can see the benefit. And one of the biggest benefits is it's actually got a really good search function in it. So if I were a smaller organization looking for support, I think it would be about how I create the structures practically on the IT I have to have an effective management system, not necessarily having to invest in huge amounts of money to do it because money will always be the challenge and in a something like the charity sector for example I can appreciate that you know you've got that added dilemma of do we invest in this or does it go into our frontline charity work okay um well Rosemary I, I don't think we have any other questions or comments from uh the people in in our online audience um, you know, thank you very much. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry we've had a few connection problems, but I'm certainly that's just one of the things that goes with um, online webinars. So I'm, I'm assuming that everyone here is is comfortable with that. Um, so I'll, I'll just finish up by saying thank, thank you very much, Rosemary, and thank you to everyone who attended. And um, just a reminder about the, the rest of the series. Uh, most of the events are now fully booked, but, but there are still two places available. Um, Maria Lim, the chair of IRMS Scotland on 1st December, and then on the 3rd of December, an evening with the writer and archivist, Laura Miller and Secretary General of the International Council of Archives. Uh, and you can find details of those events um, on the SA website. So with that, I'll have to ask everyone to give a virtual round of applause uh, to Rosemary. And thank you very much. So thank you, everyone.